the attitudes towards marine mammals, I think, have, around the world have probably changed in very basic ways. When I started <laughs> studying whales, I was told by the then sort of father figure of whale studies, and there were very, very few of them, I was told, pain, it is a total waste of time and resources for you to go out on the ocean and study live whales. We've done it. We've tried it. It doesn't work. Stop messing around. That was my advice originally. And I thought, well, you know, any, 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 any science which is based entirely on corpses and has no idea what those corpses spent their lives doing is, as far as I'm concerned, moribund <laughs> by definition. So I ignored his sage advice. And pretty soon it turned out, well, he'd been, no, no, that was something he'd found out, uh, thought he'd found out pretty much years ago. It was pathetic, frankly. Anyway, that's how I started. I think the the interest in whales has also gone way up. The work on killer whales, when I began studying whale, killer whales, there was a directive in the Navy, which was, if men are in a small boat in the water and their killer whales are spotted, you must get them all back on board a larger vessel at once. That's your primary job because those killer whales are so incred incredibly dangerous. And yes, killer whales have killed a few trainers in who spend days in the water, have spent days in the water with them. But, you know, dogs have killed quite a few people too, and doesn't mean that dogs are not useful as, as uh, companions and animals and so on. I would love to see uh, captivity of some of these animals stopped, but what's the real value of captivity? I think the value is that at this point in the world, there are more people now living in cities than there are living in the country. People are stopping having the experience ever, in some cases in their lives, of going into wild places, certainly onto the ocean. That means that the future of wildlife is in the hands of people that live in cities. There has to be some kind of exposure to the real thing, I believe, to have it have the same impact in the future. I wish it didn't be, wasn't that way, but I think it has to take place. And I mean, I would prefer to have all the whales all released and fine, end of story. But that's just kind of a fuzzy-minded thought of mine that would make me feel like a happier camper. But my feeling is what's really important is that somehow people understand the beauty of whales, their grace, their loveliness. And when you see a child, 10 years old, sitting fixated, with their face against the window of an aquarium, watching a whale inside. I think what's happening in the mind of that child is incredibly important. The, th the theory has been always, oh, you can get it from films, and the films are now so fabulous, and they are, on whales, that you know that's good enough. And the answer is, yeah, well, you can also get rock stars' performances on videos and watch them do the songs that you love. But then why do you bother to go to the concert? You don't have a seat that's with as good a view as you would if you were sitting in your own house looking at a widescreen TV. And the answer is there is something which transfers to human beings from other human beings and I believe from animals, and I'll give evidence for that in a moment, which is absolutely unique to being there in the presence of the animal. So let us for a second just imagine that what whales experience in captivity is not as bad as we think it is. Let's just for a moment consider that. Let's assume that it is far worse than we think it is, that it is so bad in reality that our brains cannot even get around how horrible the torture is that these whales experience when they're in captivity. And let us suppose that we think, but yeah, well, if we have them in captivity as ambassadors and we release them after a few years, which is the way I think it should be done, and you get another one in, if you, if you do it that way, then these people can, I mean, these whales can, you know, they will be ambassadors to the human race and therefore gain some kind of understanding from people, which is so deep that people will act on their behalf, not just collect their pictures, but act. And if you do that, let's suppose you think, well, you know, we can get all these whales back into captivity, I mean, back into the wild in 10 years, and it turns out, no, no, it's not 10 years for the species, it actually turns out to be 150 years. And so you think, oh wow, well what would it be like after 150 years when there had been seven or eight generations of these whales 
in between, well, let's say that by 150 years, you can carry on enough of a conversation with a whale to be able to interview it. Maybe that's baloney, but let's stick with it for a second. And let's say that here is the whale, it's about to be put in the water, and you're able to say to it, given the hideous torture which you have suffered for these past few years, what is your comment on the fact that you were about to be released into the wild? And my feeling is it would have positive words in it because nothing is worse than extinction. Nothing is worse than extinction. Anything, however bad it is, is better than extinction. If humanity brings to extinction a whole series of species, that's it, I'm out of here. I'm not interested. I don't want to be there part of it any longer. I think that is the most important thing. And somehow, if captivity helps it, as much as I hate captivity, I think it probably should keep going until somebody has a different idea. Now, what's the different idea? Well, here was my idea. In Argentina with right whales, they come very, very close to shore, as I've mentioned. And when they're close to shore, they fiddle around with anything that's in the water. They mess with your tide gauges. We had to have a person on the beach re-erecting uh, re smaller tide gauges because the whales kept knocking them down. And they'll fiddle with a boat that's at anchor until they've dragged the anchor and dislodged the boat and you're in trouble and you have to go out and rescue it and so on if you live in an area where there are lots of whales. Well, this means that whales, everything you watch whales do, right whales, excuse me, those are the ones I know best, gives you the idea that they're just bored, blind, stiff. They'll mess with anything they encounter. If a right whale encounters a piece of floating kelp, the first thing they do is they come up underneath it and they put it on top of their head and then they move forward and just come down under the water just enough to... <coughs> They come down underneath the water just enough to allow the kelp to slide down along their body. And it comes within reach of their tail and they reach around with their tail and they bring it back up to the surface and they do the whole thing again. They'll do that for five hours, something like that. So my feeling is, okay, they seem to have a propensity for playing and messing around with stuff. So now you put out in some area off a beach you put out a series of toys for these whales. I would think a pair of car wash brushes might be good. They could swim between them. A bunch of pipes which were moored at the bottom to an anchor so that they were straining, they're full of air and they're straining to stand upright. So they look like stems in a forest. And you make a small forest, let's say a quarter of an acre. And then the whale can push through these pipes and they will bump against its side. And I suspect they'd like that. A hose which had water coming out of it probably even warm water you could try. And that would, I think, that they will, dolphins will mess around in a ho hose, and dolphins in captivity will mess with a hose for hours. And a whole series of things, that a, a ball which they could push down to the bottom and get to s sit on the bottom, dolphins do that. A whole series of toys. Now these whales, I suspect, would come around to mess with the toys. So now you put a fence around this area. And the fence has a big gate. And when you open the gate, the adult whales can come in and out. And when you close the gate, they can't. So now what you do is when, at a particular hour every morning, you open the gate and you ring a bell underwater or some sound underwater. And I suspect the whales would get used to coming in, messing with the toys, and at the end of a period of time, you'd close it. Now you build bleachers along the beach somewhere in Argentina, you could do that. And you sell tickets for people to come and watch this show. And eventually you give them the best toy of all, which would be a person on a surfboard. And my feeling is that kind of interaction is something which is being stopped absolutely everywhere because it's so dangerous. And the answer is not really. Look carefully at how many people die doing how many sports. If that was the case, we should get rid of football, soccer, skydiving, uh, bungee jumping, anything you can imagine that, oh, oh, very dangerous. My feeling is, come on, people do what feeds their souls. And I think that kind of experience, I would love to know just how far an association between a whale and a person can go. Nobody's tested it, and every door that anybody can close to finding out is being closed. I think that's a shame. Do I work for the 
whale watch industry or for the, uh, or for the um, aquariums? Absolutely not. I don't get a penny from them. But I believe that what they're doing has this positive side as much as I hate what they're doing.